So I got the two ends bottom to bottom here, and this is a layout for the dado. So this will be the center divider, which will let's be go right in there, recess in there, 3 16 3 16 into the side panel. So I'll, now let's cut these out, and I've never cut a dado like this. I'm not exactly sure how to go about it. Uh, not using power tools, but we'll figure something out here. I've got my first dado cut here in the side. And leaving some blood on there, I stabbed my finger with a sliver. So I just cut this out with a three-quarter chisel. I marked it, this is number five, my fifth joint. So I'm going to try it here. This will be the divider. Oh, that's nice. That is really nice. And that'll glue in there, that'll give it a lot of strength. We'll glue it to the bottom, it'll help that span. And it's a beautiful thing, it fits in there nice. So I'll uh, put the other one up here and I'll show you how I did it. May not be the best way if you uh, have a better way, put that in the comments. It's just the way I did it, but I think it, I think it turned out pretty good. I'll tell you what guys, I love this dogging system. Just gives me the warm and fuzzies every time I use it. So this is my main bench here. And so I've got this little piece of hickory that I use all the time. It's cut like, oh, I don't know, quarter inch or so. And it's, it's, it stays below my material and it also spans the gap. So I can have some adjustability here, but I use that all the time. I put that in here and then I can just simply hold this in place and it doesn't move around on me. You know, and so I'm going to cut right there, so I don't want the dog right there, so I can move it, I'll kind of offset it here a bit. It doesn't take very much, just a little bit of pressure, just to hold it, hold it there. So what I've done is I've just, uh, just taken cut with the grain here, really lightly, and make a little line there. Some people say you don't need to cut with the grain, but I found that it helps me to get a cleaner edge. And I got that down there deep. Again, we're going 3 16 into recessing into this. Now cross grain. Of course, we can. We want to make a little knife fall right there, so that we have a nice clean dado. Because we're, you know, we're going to be looking at this every time we reposition. It. Every time we uh, use our our toolbox, you know, we want we want that to to look like nice and clean. We don't want to have a raggedy edge there and and feel bad about it every time we look at it for the rest of our life. Okay, so now we've got a nice clean cut around there. So to start this dado, I just took my, uh, my three-quarter chisel and just kind of really carefully, we're going to remove some of this material here just so we can have kind of a clean wall. Just, I just used my dovetail saw and sawed down, and that seemed to work really good, really quick. So I'll just take that out there, and we'll push that in there. What nice clean edges. This is the fun part here. And I've got my three-quarter chisel. And I'll do a, just go bevel down. And we'll just carefully start to remove the waste material in the center. Now I've reassembled the caddy and we'll see if we did it properly, if everything fits in together. Each side's numbered. Perfect. There's our divider. So our divider, I made it a one inch lower than the sides. No reason, I think it just kind of looks nice. Um, 
It just seemed like the right thing to do. So what'd this end up? We got uh, five and three quarters, six and three quarters on the side. So we're gonna put one more divider and I'm gonna make it actually even step it down. So we'll have the progressive steps an inch lower. So this is five and three quarters. This will be four and three quarters, the small divider, which will dado into the sides here. Small tools, tape measures and things, enough room for a draw knife and such over here. And then timber framing chisels, long six slick axes, even the saw in there. So let's lay out and cut this last uh, divider. So I wasn't able to build my toolbox out of the, my beloved Doug fir. Just, it just costs too much money. But there's no reason why I can't have a small piece in there. So my little divider. It's going to be made from this beautiful piece of fur there, so maybe next time. Perfect. All right, so let's fit our dividers one last time here. Make sure that everything fits before we cut our sides. Oh, that's nice. There's our little fur piece. So our box is really taking shape now. There's the divider system. That's gonna be nice. Doesn't that look nice? I like the, the stepping down, the dropping inch, inch, inch. There, place for pencils and tape measures, small items and, and draw knife and knives and measuring stuff, full length for an ax. There's an ax there, full full size splitting ax there. It can go in there, plenty of room. 36 inches inside. That's gonna be wonderful. So here's the final shape of the end plates that I kind of came up with. I think it it, it is a, a very beautiful shape. It uh, a lot of those these toolboxes would have came up to maybe a little bit smaller point in area, but this being pine wood. I want to leave as much material there as possible. I don't want, if it's loaded up, to, to tear out the top. So I'll, and I'll actually, I'll sink this handle in here pretty deep. I want to leave plenty of material there on the top. And it should be fine. It's going to be, I think it's going to be plenty strong, but the shape is very elegant. And I think it's beautiful. The uh, radius here, the concave, starting right there at the point and coming up. And a quarter of inch inch taper here, but uh, ah, I think it looks beautiful. Just really lends it, proportionally, it just lends itself really well to the box. It gives it a really, a custom, a touch of elegance that it, that a kind of a utilitarian piece like this has. It doesn't have to have, you know, it's the, I always talk about the details, the details, the smallest details are what um, separates the mundane from the extraordinary. Sometimes it's just the smallest little thing but um, they make a big difference, especially, especially, especially to the overall aesthetics of it. So I'm gonna use this as a template and I'll show you how I'll cut this out, bring you along. We'll cut out the other one and we'll make our handle and we'll be ready to glue it all together. So I'm gonna just double check here. I wanna make sure that this concave, this point here starts right at the same area at the top of this. So I put a little knife cut there and just double checked it and double check the other side and it looks like we're really good. That's, that's nice because it means we're real even all the way across the board. So we'll flush the sides here and make sure we're all the same, look good. And then we can use this to very much speed things along. Now uh, to do the original one, what I did is I used a bucket. I used this big, uh, the bottom of this big bucket right here for the big radius and then for the small one, I used a piece of sheet metal, just a, a trim ring right here, like this. And I just used that and just traced to the inside. But I, I don't, don't need to do that now that I have this pattern already. So we'll just, just transfer these marks here. It's like that. Yep, I've just been using the little Stanley 65 block plane. 
she has to run a little chamfer across there and that angle sitting at that, that low angle blade is really good for end grain.